Okay, in concept seven, we're going to be basically taking with what we started yesterday with concept A and adding to it in terms of the number of conversion factors we're going to be using. So yesterday we related everything to the mole. We learned that the GFM of the type of particle we're working with is equal to one mole. The volume of the gas at STP takes a volume of 22.4 liters, or one mole of it takes a volume of 22.4 liters. And that if I have one mole of a certain type of particle, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So yesterday we were working with just using one of these equalities at a time. However, we can also then move between mass, volume, and number of particles of a substance directly going and using two conversion factors. So if we know any one of these, we can find the rest. Anytime if you use this flow chart, you move through an arrow that represents an equality or conversion factor. So you're going to see for today, we're going to be going through two arrows for our calculation. So we're going to use two equalities or two conversion factors. So our first question is, how many molecules are contained in 34 grams of ammonia? So first off, some things I want to point out. We're working with one substance, which will be important because that will differentiate some stuff we're going to be doing later in the unit. You can see our two units are molecules and grams. So neither of those are moles, which means then that we're going to have to use two conversion factors, and we're going to go through moles. So our starting unit is mass. We're going to go from mass to moles, and then we'll go from moles to our target unit, which is the number of particles. So two arrows means two equalities. Just like we did in the beginning of the year with dimensional analysis, we're going to start with the value that we're given. We have 34 grams of ammonia. Like we said, our first conversion factor is going to be from mass to moles. Just like at the beginning of the year, whatever unit we start with is the unit that has to go in the denominator. So for our equality, go back to that chart above in your notes, the equality for mass to moles is that the GFM is equal to one mole. Because I want grams here and I need grams on the bottom, my GFM I'm going to put on the bottom and then we'll put moles in the top. You're going to have to, just like we did in yesterday's lesson, add up the GFM of NH3. Go back to concept A if you need help with that. And we're going to find that 17 grams of ammonia is equal to one mole of ammonia. Great. So now we've gotten it in moles. Now I need to go from moles to the number of particles. So our next conversion factor, because I have moles up in the numerator, I have to put moles in the denominator. Here we're going to go from moles to the number of particles. So we have moles and then our molecules of NH3. Okay, looking at our um, flowchart up at the top, we can see that one mole of NH3 is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of NH3. So if we go through and cross out any units that are in both the numerator and denominator, we're going to find that our grams cancel out as well as our moles, which leave us with our target unit, which is what we're interested in, which is in molecules of ammonia. Just like at the beginning of the year, we're going to multiply across the top and then divide by anything on the bottom. And when we do that, we get 1.2 times 10 to the 24th molecules of ammonia. All right, looking at another example, here our question is, how many grams of krypton does it take to fill a 3.4 liter balloon at STP? Again, some things to point out with this question. We're working with one substance. If we look at our units, neither of them are grams. This means then that we're going to have to go through two equalities. We're going to go from our starting unit of liters, which is our volume, to moles. And then from moles, we'll go to our target unit, which is our grams, or our mass. So we're going to need two equalities again. Just like before, we have th starting with our given value, 3.4 liters of krypton. In our first equality, we're going to be going from volume to moles. So that equality that we know holds to be true is our one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. So if I have liters in the numerator here, I need to put liters in the denominator of my first equality. So we have liters and mole. And then again, our equality that we know is true is 22.4 liters is equal to one mole of krypton. Remember that's at STP. All right, then in our next equality, we're going to go from moles to mass. So we know that that equality is that one mole is equal to the GFM. So if I have moles here in my numerator, I have to put moles in the denominator. I'm going to relate that to grams of krypton. And we know that one mole of krypton is equal to the GFM of krypton, which I get off the periodic table. If I go through and check my units now, I can see that liters cross off and moles cross off. So I'm left with my desired unit, which is what I'm trying to get to, which is grams. Now as we, I multiply across the top, divide by anything on the bottom, 
I get my final value of 12.7 grams of Krypton. All right, in this third example, I would suggest that you try setting this up on your own and then checking your work so you can see how well you got a handle on this and then come back and check it. You should see again, as you read this question, a couple of things. First, we're working with one substance, fluorine. If I look at my units, I'm dealing with molecules in volume. Um, so because of that, and neither of them being moles, I'm gonna have to use two equalities. So I'm gonna go from the number of particles to moles, and then for moles, I'll go to volume. So I need two equalities. Okay, you should have started with your number of particles, 1.22 times 10 to the 23rd, ooh, that should say 10 to the 21st, molecules of fluorine gas. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and go from particles to moles. Okay, so there we have our moles or molecules, which is our particles of fluorine and our moles of fluorine. We're gonna fill in those equalities, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole of fluorine. And our final conversion factor, we're gonna go from moles to volume, which means here that we're gonna relate moles to our liters, and we know that one mole of fluorine gas at STP is gonna be equal to 22.4 liters of fluorine. Okay, if we cross out our like units that are in both the numerator and denominator, we're gonna cross out our molecules, cross out moles, be left with liters, which is what we're looking to get. And then I'm not gonna trust this answer here because I'm gonna guess I use this value here instead of the times 10 to the 21st. So we'll just use that one. And you end up with 0 0.05 liters of fluorine gas. All right, so that's it. Um, we'll discuss this a lot tomorrow um, in class and we'll be practicing using these two equalities. Again, the big thing is again, going back to this flow chart, we're working with one substance and we're basically moving between mass, volume, and number of particles.